Hello everybody. So the 2003 Dodge Ram 3500, uh, I'm gonna change the ignition lock cylinder. Um, if you have any issues with the key going in and not you know, turning or getting stuck or any of those things, sometimes they can wear out. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either replace just the ignition lock set and you can rekey it to your original key, which you changed the little wafers. I'll show you how to do that. Or you can change ignition lock set and the door lock cylinder as well. Uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna change ignition lock set, ignition lock cylinder, and the door lock cylinder as well. So I have a new key. Uh, I only have one key for this truck and it's kind of worn out already. So I'm going to just change them both. That way I get two new keys and two new lock sets for either one. Generally, I don't think you have a problem with the door one too much because it doesn't get used all that much. But like I say, this is the avenue I'm going to go. And I will show you how to do both in case that's the way you want to do it. So let's get started. So this is the um, the set that I got. It's a part number on it. So first thing I'm going to do is going to take this off. It is a T20 Torx. I'm going to pull this back towards the wheel and then that comes off then you're going to have one screw there you're gonna have one screw here and you're gonna have another screw in there and then um, once you get those screws off this will separate and then you'll take the bottom off I would basically drop that down once you get it separated and pull this off of here and then kind of slide it off that way and that is the way that I would take that off You know what? It's better to do it that way first. One hook it around that side and slide it this way. And then uh, and that comes off. So this is the ignition lock cylinder. That's the lock position. You cannot push the release tab in this position. So you have to actually have the key and turn it forward probably to like the accessory or something but there's a spot right there where it turns but like here it doesn't and then it'll go down so you got to turn a little bit to get to the spot where it'll go down and then you can remove it if you go too far it can't go down again so it's somewhere like probably the run position or just off of accessory but uh we'll look when we turn that key and i'll show you but that's basically what you're doing so there's a little hole on the bottom uh right up under there that you push that this little this little uh release lock, catch or whatever you call that in once you get it in the right position so up under here right there that is the hole where that little release latch is so we got to turn that key forward and then we can push it in and then pull the key out with the cylinder so it's pretty much the run position you're going to turn it to Take our next one, line it up so that tab's in the same spot. Slide it in. Turn the key back. So, once it's all back in there, we're going to uh, put the shroud back on. But basically, you're going to put the key in, turn it to the run position, push that little thing, that little release latch up. And then you're going to pull it out by the, the cylinder here because the key was just kind of moving. I probably could have ripped the key right out of there if I wanted to. But 
So you grab by the, the lock cylinder and pull it out once you get that button pushed in. You gotta hold the button in as you're pulling it and it should come out. And then, like I say, you put the new one in the same run position and then you slide it in, turn it back, and you're done. This is for the non-skim key, by the way. So this does not have the chip in it. If you have the gray key, the gray key is going to be a skim key with the chip in it. The black keys generally do not have the skim key in it or the chip in it. So that's what you're going to do. This is for that. Obviously, I think it's going to be a different procedure if you have the skim key. But So next, I'm going to put the shroud back on, uh, put it back together, and then we should be done with that. And then we'll work on the door. So to change the lock, we got to remove the door handle. So to remove the door handle, we got to remove the inner door, um, inner door panel. Um, if you got a dodge, it's probably broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this, unplug this door module, and pull this out of the way. And then we got some screws. We got a Phillips screw here. We've got one there. We've got one here, and we have one over here. And then there is a 10 millimeter bolt that's right at the end of this socket that you got to take out and that removes the door handle. And then once these are removed, you just lift this up and it comes right off. Kind of cutting into the glue should re stick to itself. So, so let's see in here. So, in here, that little, this little red tab here, you're gonna grab it on the back side and then you're gonna pull it this way because this little bit here is a clip that clips onto the rod. So, you're gonna undo this clip this way, it's gonna turn like that and then that rod's gonna come out of that hole. There's another one right there with blue that's gonna push in towards the door and then that rod's gonna come out. And then you have an eight millimeter bolt or nut there and an eight millimeter nut there. And then that door handle will come out the front. So a lot of this, I was actually able to get right through this hole. So I was able to just push that blue clip that way through the hole. You can get at this nut here through this hole too with an extension and then that one obviously you can get it that way i did have to reach in to get that pink one off though so we'll take those nuts off and that door handle will come off kind of like that so yeah it looks a little easier if you if you pull the handle out it moves that thing out of that weight out of the way like that and you get a little bit more room but it kind of hooks around that lock so you got to kind of pull a handle out and then kind of get it out like that so so what we gotta do is we gotta get this clip off so we can get this little arm off so we're gonna come in here pry the little locking bit up out of the way get the edge of the clip and this little piece in the middle and uh, just kind of squeeze it you know slide that sideways so there's that that's off I take this arm out because we're gonna keep that and this has to go on like that so I make sure we kind of do it the same way go like that it's gonna go on here take our new clip go 
like this. I'll try to squeeze that back in. So that's holding that. So this is set up to go in there. Um, you need a T25, I believe. I don't know if a 27 fits. Nope, 25. T25. Take this out. I'll remove that. This comes out. New one goes in. And there's that. Now you've got your new key in there. We'll go clean this stuff up, stick it back in the door, and then I will show you how to rekey your lock cylinder if you don't want to do this and you only want to change the lock cylinder in the ignition. Come over here, hold that open, kind of push that in, line your holes up. Now that's in, we'll put our two nuts on. Put the rods back in, clip it up, I'll put the door panel back on, which is just the reverse of the removal, and should be back together. So, to get that blue one, I came behind it with the pick and I pulled it forward. To get that pink one, I used a screwdriver, just pushed it that way. So, there's that. I'll put this back on. So when putting this door panel back on, you want to remove this little um, trim piece that is for the, the push rod for the door lock. So to remove that, you want to squeeze these two tabs, you know, one on each side. And then it's gone. That gets the hole a little bit bigger so that latch will go th or the, the little door stopper right there will go through easier through that one and then you take that thing that you threw on the ground and you just pop it back on i think these actually these bottom ones bottom ones kind of go in first it's four along the bottom you get those started and then you kind of pick them up pick the door up once those are in plugs up and that goes into place put our handle back on our screws in and then uh, put our latch back our trim piece back on here slide that on put that in take our new key and 
works. I already tried it in this one, obviously, because we had it in there. My key works too. So I put these on my keychain, plug this back in. I do have new ones of these. Um, these doors aren't staying on. I'm putting a different set of doors on. They're not rusty. So, so I do have new ones of these, but I'm still in the middle of doing repairs and stuff to this, so I'm not gonna put them on just yet because I think they, they'll break if I gotta take them off and put them on again. Um, and I also have new inside panels, so I'm not too worried about this at the moment. So if you... If you're wondering why it's like that, that's why it's like that. So now I'm going to show you how to rekey this if you would like to rekey just this and then you don't have to do the door. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to repin this lock cylinder. So if you wanted to just replace the lock cylinder and not replace the door lock cylinder, then you can reuse your original key. So, you put your key in, you're going to turn it back to what would be the accessory position. And there's this little tiny uh, pin in there that's spring-loaded. You're going to get that pin in, and then you're going to turn this back some more so you get past that little hook there. And then you're going to turn it to the point where you can see in there, you've got that piece right there. See a little, little half moon there. That uh, that retains the inner core. So once you get it there, you can take that out, put that aside, and uh, then you're gonna remove your key. Now I would recommend getting a piece of paper and writing down the numbers that are on these little wafers here. So they they do stagger. They are on both sides. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Um, they only go in one way. So you're gonna wanna probably mark your paper. I'd probably use that little hook there. So it's it's the one that you gotta push the little detent in to go by. That way you can kinda identify what side of the uh, this core is which side. So you know which way it goes. So, so you got one here, then two. It, it goes like kinda like a zigzag. So you're going to want to pick one of them, stop pulling them out, and uh, you can see it's got a little ear on there. That little ear goes up against the spring that's in there, so that's why it'll only go in one way. If you try to put it in the other way, like this, it, uh, it won't go in, it just hits. So it only goes one way, make sure you don't lose a little spring either. So anyway. Take it out, there's going to be a number on there. This one has an O3 on it. So we got this piece of paper here. I would probably go like uh, with a little notch there. And then you got down the middle, I bore like this. So here we go, notch side, it's going to be the first one. Gonna pull out the wafer, and on there it's got an O2. So it's got a little number on the bottom there. So let's say first one it's gonna be a two. This side, this one is a hard to read. is a four so this is the pinout to this key um, so 
sometimes they are difficult to read. So basically what you want is all these little wafers have to, when you put the key in, tuck down below the, the edge of this bore here and that kind of releases the locking part of it because that's what keeps it from rotating is these these stick up into into the groove that's in the outside section so it won't let you turn because of that so when you put all the, when you put the key in they all go in and then it will spin so now that we know what our wafers are you would take your new core take it apart the same way and then you'd put all the wafers in that would probably come with the core. You might even be able to mismatch the ones that are in there if they're close enough. And uh, then you would get it so you can get your key in, and it looks like that, and put it back together. So in there, back together, and that's that. Obviously make sure it works before you put it in your vehicle. I mean, you can't put it in your vehicle unless it works because it's gotta be turned to the run position, but that is how you would repin your lock cylinder to match your old key, so you would only have to change your lock cylinder. So, anyway, you, you may even be able to clean this up. A, a lot of times, what I found with this when I first took it apart, um, all them wafers were kind of stuck in there because there's little bits of grease, and then there's bits of um, buildup of, I think it's the brass that they're made out of. They kind of got in there, and it, it sort of sawtooths in as the key goes in and out so many times. It kind of wears into the groove a little bit and um, and that's why they stop working over time is because they'll stick up or you can't get the key out because it get jammed down um, you could probably take it out clean it up relubricate it and kind of maybe wipe or file the burr off or sand the burr off a little bit and put them back in and you'd probably be able to get away with reusing the lock cylinder some more because it's actually operating a lot smoother now that since I've done that I probably didn't even have to change them um, but that's an option too, if you want to try to buy yourself some time. So anyway, hope that can help somebody. Thanks for watching.